Hello and welcome. So today I would like to share another comprehensive guide about using Framer Studio and learning Framer.js on this offer within the topic of the syntax. So basically if you check out the previous videos we already talk about the design section and the code and now we will focusing on talking about the syntax. So this is the example of the prototype that we already made from the previous videos and if we click it uh, it will you can check it out something amazing like that okay let's reset it and let's try it again okay so now we are going to talk about the syntax so the first thing is probably if you're just getting started on this software you will be challenged to understand about this syntax and it's not a strange thing because people also learn new things every day and so now let's dive in into the syntax so as you can see here I will try to translate all of this syntax for you so keep in mind that if you have a piece of paper or a notepad on the computer you can type what happens on the code so you'll be understand so here on the top so first thing we see that box dot draggable equals true so basically true is a value of a boolean so boolean is one of the most important aspect or elements in programming which will result in the value between true or false and if you see the entire code here which is box draggable equals true you will probably already know what it means it means that the box is draggable because you input it as a true for the value if you change this to false then when we try to drag the box here we cannot do so because it is false okay we cannot drag it as we do in the oval here so oval is draggable because oval draggable equals true so basically this should be remembered pretty much easy in this case so you need to type box and the command here dot draggable equals false so this is the example of coffee script so you will write a coffee script style syntax in Framer Studio for your entire project. It's almost similar to JavaScript, but it's more simpler. So, you know, if you already have learned JavaScript, I think this won't be pretty much difficult. But if you haven't, then of course, it will be pretty much challenging in the beginning. But that's okay. Okay, so here's next box dot on click chevron so what does it mean so of course if you spelling this one in English it means box on click which means box on click when you click the box like that right almost the same thing as that and you got this chevron right over here which means what happens to the box when you click the box that what it means so if you're talking to another person this line means okay so if I click the box this will happen so something like that okay so now let's continue box dot on click chevron to determine what happens to the box when you do the event of on click here okay if you're curious about this kind of event over here you can check it out at event and then you can select any kinds of layer objects you made and then as you can see you can see click double click touch mouse and etc you can try play your own but for the essential of this guide we will go from the simplest and the basic one which is on click here so let's continue so the next one is as you can see the syntax have an indentation okay so by the way about indentation probably in other programming language or in other software you may use space right to create indentation but in CoffeeScript it is highly recommended to use tab you know as you can see here there are this 
several tab lines or tab spaces here, you must use tab and use in creating indentation. So it will be much easier to manage the code. Of course, in the example here, there isn't much code yet. But if you already work on such complex prototype and stuff, you will be needing to, you know, manage your code pretty well. So remember, indentation can also mean the sub layers. If you're probably familiar with programs like Photoshop or Illustrator, this is like the second layer, or I mean, sub layer from box on click. If you do this, it means that the state of box.animate is equal to on click and the result will be nothing. So whenever you play or reset your you know prototype, it will also play at the beginning because you don't really determine that this belongs to on click because it's having the same line. So let's let's take an example here. If we reset it, see, the box automatically resize its properties over here. But if we add the tab and indentation, as you can see, it only works changing the properties when it is click. See, that's the way the tab works. So again, continue. Let's box dot animate, which means animate the box as you can see right over here on the auto code there is this one menu called animate which is essentially the same as this command over here so either you can use the auto code like this or you want to manually type the code which is recommended by the way so there we go so basically, if you're just getting started, you may be wondering what are these and what are these. So basically, this means border radius, it changes the radius. So the edge, the tip of the edges of the object in this case. It's also the same thing if we click design here and then we select the object that is not a round type object and then as you can see here there is this radius you know it's also the same as for the radius so you can either automatically change from this or during the code but here's the thing what is the difference either i'm changing this radius or this one what makes it different? Why should I write over here? Why this is 50 and this is 0? So this is the answer. Basically, if you're changing the radius here, you will change the object from the very first beginning. So let's take an example. We delete this border radius here. And then we go to design. We add this radius to 90. So it will be circle or a round object from the beginning. And as we change the code, it also change its shape from the very first beginning. OK, so we don't want that. But sometimes we also need to know that details. So it's best for you to keep the zero and works with the code, which is border radius go to 100 so it means that this first state this box radius is zero and then when you animate after you click it of course it will change the radius to 100 so that what i mean okay very simple and the other also applied the same thing the same rule whether it's background color the time of its appearance, the size, and everything. So if you also click this small box here, as you can see on the left side, we see radius here. We are changing to 100. For sound, which basically part of the snippet, it, it doesn't have to be indented on the box, on the object. Okay? 
So if we do this, let's check it out. Can we play it? Of course, we can still play. Okay? But at the same time, it doesn't really suit the animate here. Okay? So basically, whether you want to do this or you don't want to give an indentation, it basically could mean the same thing. But I but I am giving the reason why I did this because basically sound is on the snippet not on the animate but still it is universally accepted to do this so which one do you prefer is basically okay but for the essential of this comprehensive guide I will try to explain everything on this code that I write you may use this along the way or even this you can play it around okay so now we're going to the second one of course it should be the same explanation so I will going skip to the name which is oval which indicates that this is for oval see as you can see I'm selecting the oval here so this will only occurs inside the oval on click method so other things here apply the same explanation with box so now you may ask why are these box trackable or outside of this method whatsoever of course here's the thing if you add this inside here as you can see I'm adding over draggable to this it is actually true by means it is not false in terms of syntax but in terms of chain of command this will be activated only if we click the object because by the way oval is indented here so if we didn't click it we can't do anything see see but if we click it we can drag it for the essential of UX or user experience it's not good because people need to do twice which is they have to click and drag but if we actually can put the drag in the beginning so they don't have to click to drag I think it's much better right so that's the thing so that's the thing here it's much easier another this one there you go oops I haven't changed the true all right there you go so basically that's all about the syntax for now it's not finished yet but for the essential of this guide I need you to practice more to familiarize yourself with the syntax which of course an important thing to do okay so if you have any question you can ask on the comments and I will try to answer as brief as possible so by the way this isn't the end but this also something meaningful in your learning process so I hope it helps and thank you so much for watching I hope it could spark some insight and inspirations for you to keep learning using this software Okay, so thank you and if you like this video, you can subscribe to support this channel and if you dislike it, thank you so much and that's all for now. I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye-bye.